are. On the 11th of November 1942, during our retreat from El Alamein, we naturally flew missions yet. Not by far, not in full strength. And uh, I remember well, we were starting from an airport called, called Gambut, Gambut, southeast of Tobruk, uh, in the night against British columns, armored columns or other columns, which had been uh, ascertained in their position the evening before. But these, in, in, in a moving war, the units don't stand until the next morning. But we were assigned to attack next morning. And our commander, Walter Siegel, um, uh, he was then already wing commander higher up. He opposed, he opposed to the Fliegerführer staff. Uh, we shouldn't do this, shouldn't re-recognize again. But he, it was enforced that we were flying. We had about 15 machines yet, but we had only two Messerschmitt 109s as a cover. So that was not much. I remember we were starting uh, at 4.30. It was pitch dark yet. And uh, flying a bit up, and then suddenly the 209s, the covering, were coming up from another airport. And one of our pilots were, was breaking the wireless, uh, wireless uh, silence and was saying, one swallow doesn't make a, a summer. One swallow doesn't make a summer. It's a, it's a sort of a problem. Uh, uh, the commander, stop! Silently we went on. In the east, the sun rose, and it didn't last long. Then suddenly, uh, a group of fighters was raining down on us. Our 209s were, <laughs> were busy with themselves, couldn't protect us anymore, <coughs> and our unit was broken up by these fighters. There must have been... <coughs> well, and I was coming into a dogfight with one of these fighters, and I was narrower, and I nearly was behind him, so to get him my two machine guns. But while I was doing this from upper right, somebody, enemy fighters, was flying over my machine, riddling my motor block with his machine gun, whereupon uh, the coolant was flying out and it did not last long and the propeller stood. And the air was hanging in the air about yet maybe 1,500 meters high. So I had to make a forced landing and I went down and I went down. A big silence in the rear up, uh, the battle rattled on and I was silently flying down and my gunner suddenly cried, curve, Lieutenant, curve. Uh, I didn't make a curve, there was a fighter behind me I said, aha, uh -huh, he's now shooting me up. I will push the plane down the nose suddenly so that he might shoot over me. But he didn't shoot. He was a, he was a gentleman. He only observed my landing, circled around. But naturally, he reported by wireless and this and this and that square. The maps had squares. Estuka has, has force landed, so that they could take me in, ground troops. And while we were then down there, and we started to unpack our desert 
uh, emergency pack. There was even a, a, a sleeping bag with uh, uh, either down, and there was a, a hunting gun and for for a camp spot. Or what else? A lot was there in our wings for that purpose. And while we were doing this, again the fighter was coming, looking onto us. We took cover, but he didn't shoot. He only wanted to see what we are doing. And on the horizon, I saw a column going along. I said to my gunner, let's stop this unpacking. We go forth and look. This sounds of the Italian diesel Trenta Quattros. It was not. Suddenly out of this column, two armored cars veered towards us. And I said to myself, armored cars just here. Rommel has been left only maybe 30, not more, just two of them here, impossible. So we took cover and it turned out it were Britishers. <laughs> and they stood and they looked with their glasses to find us, but we were in the dead angle of them. We were even lying, they didn't see us. But they went back to our plane and they took everything which we had put aside for our, for our march west in the night to Rommel, took away. So we, later on they also went up and there we were, we, we had nothing. Nothing left, nothing, no water, no nothing. There we stood. <laughs> I said, all right, what are we doing? We blew up our plane. This we could yet do, via the, the petrol tank opened and uh, uh, a string of um, cotton and then a match where the cotton was lighted and then it went in and we went away. And then we went away and always towards the west. Suddenly from the horizon in our rear Roughly, a big column covers the horizon far and wide, and we couldn't evade left or right, so we took covers. There were all ditches and all sorts of things from former battles. <clears throat> and then this array of, 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 of motorized vehicles stopped just not far from us. So we could have to lie and to lie, and the sun was shining onto us, and we were lying in our ditches. He's there, I uh, here. And they didn't move. They just uh, cooked and uh, stood. But suddenly, a car of them came out in my direction, in our direction, and uh, suddenly they shouted, Stop, stop, on the, on the lorry. People stood. Stop! They had seen me. And I thought myself, it cannot be, it cannot be. Suddenly I heard the word, come on. I took my eyes up and there I looked into the mouth of a pistol and a red cap on top and a moustache. That was a military police. Huh. So what? I came up. And I turned this way so that they had my gunner 30 meters away somewhere in their rear. And they couldn't see him, so he remained. And I was captured here by the British 7th Armored Division. A good troop, fine troop, and it was somewhere far south, far southeast from Tobruk cannot locate it.